Hey everybody, welcome back to HPC Tech Shorts, the engineering water cooler here in AWS. Uh, we're here this week to talk about um, fair share scheduling, uh, which is a new scheduling algorithm that's an, an set of you know rather sophisticated controls. It's been introduced into AWS Batch uh, just this last week. Um, so Batch fair share scheduling gives you a bunch more controls for actually orchestrating jobs in multiple queues uh, inside Batch and allowing you to you know maybe wait some jobs give some uh, smaller users some advantages in terms of being able to leapfrog over, over tasks that are in front of them in the queue. It gives you much more control over how the scheduler is going to make decisions about what gets scheduled next. Uh, and so we think it's going to make a big difference. It's already made quite a big impact in the customers that we've been previewing it with and who've been helping us in the working backwards process for it. Um, we're going to be joined uh, by Christian Kniep from, the, from my team, uh, who's in Berlin. He's going to be here to talk to us. And then also Aswin Demidar, who's the senior software engineer from the AWS Batch team, uh, who's actually been leading the effort on this particular bit of code. It's great to have them here, and I hope you enjoy the conversation. We've done some pretty cool work and, and uh, added a lot of functionality to Batch. Um, I don't think we need to explain to people what FIFO queue is. First in, first out, there's not many other ways of imagining a queue working until you get to complex environments. And I think what we want to do is just jump straight in and get you to show us a bit of what it looks like and how we've implemented some of this stuff. Yes, uh, sure, Booth. Uh, why don't I share my screen and uh, and show, show you certain things in our console? So, Aswin, so you've got job queues, which is where the jobs pile up. Uh, that's where they get queued up, as it were. Yeah, the computer environments is really where they're going to get executed, and those computer environments are going to get selected by the job queues or perhaps by, by modified policies. But those computer environments are going to get selected for where a job gets run. Those computer environments are quite elastic, right? And they've got their own elasticity rules about how quickly they get bigger and smaller and stuff, right? Yeah, the, the, in the compute environments, you specify what's called the max vCPUs. It's, uh, it kind of depend, uh, defines how much, uh, what's the max spend you're, uh, you're willing to yeah, uh, totally. do for, 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 the, for, for running your workloads. Um, yeah. So if there, if there are jobs uh, and compute environment, job queues are attached to compute environments, mm -hmm. and what Bat Scheduler does is it looks at uh, how many jobs are in your queue and automatically adjust the capacity that's available in the compute environment. Uh, it, it, you know, it right sizes based on the size of your jobs to make it as efficient as possible yeah. to run your job. That makes sense. And so then, and then the scheduling policies come along, and that's that's really where we're gonna. That's where we tweak all of the variables for. Yeah, the scheduling know, for, policy yeah, sure. is where you tweak the variables that define how how the jobs are going to flow from from your queue uh, cool. to the compute env environments. All right. I, so I turned on the com uh, compute environment here, uh, and what we see now is that you know share uh, gamma, which which I submitted jobs to first uh, in the FIFO queue, right here. I'm just go go down to FIFO and look at the jobs that are available in FIFO. Uh, yep. You know, it shows gamma job that was submitted here. So you can see that it's it's running ga gamma jobs uh, from the queue. Yeah, and it's running them first because they it's were running them first, first because they they were the first. So, but then you see uh, in, in the fair share case where they're all running at the same time uh, with whatever capacity is available, all wow. three jobs are running together, and. Uh, the scheduler is making a decision behind the scenes when it's dispatching jobs. It's looking at, you know, share alpha, how much jobs did it run already? Uh, if, it's, it's, uh, if it's less than um, beta and gamma, let's schedule jobs from share alpha. And the next cycle, it's going to take share beta, uh, compare with every other share that's available, and then put that job in if it's the smallest. So you see all, the whole workload gets done at the same time, whereas with uh, FIFO, you know, you just have one of the uh, one of the. Uh, so that is just like extremely that. high contrast. That's just like everyone else is waiting. The yeah, everyone else is waiting just because you came ahead in time. Um, you know, it's not fair. 
And, and, that, and that is fair. indeed not fair. That's actually kind of exactly the scenario a lot of people don't want to find themselves in. Uh, so that that's my small little demo here. Uh, I mean, there there's a lot more you can do uh, with fair share. A uh, lot more mm -hmm. behavior that that that's specific to your use case that you can tweak around here. We wanted to make it as simple as possible to use. So there's not much change in submitting a job. I can kind of show you how to submit a job uh, in, in a fair share queue. The only additional parameter that you need to specify to for a fair share job is called the share identifier. This is a mm -hmm. free context field. Uh, you put in any string here um, and uh, this lets the scheduler know that you know it's it's part of this string workload, and it treats that as a single share. Uh, you know, so you, if if you think about it, obviously we have FIFO queues, and with fair share and share identifier, you have now a lot more number of FIFO queues, which which are smartly selected from. Like if you were trying to fairly share across three different uh, engineering groups, right? Uh, one that's you know one that's working on the wing of the aircraft, the other one that's working on the tail of the aircraft, and the other one that's working on the fuselage or something. You could you could just ask them to put in the name of the departments as the share identifier, and that yeah. would fairly share across those across those groups. Yeah. If it were budget, you could do the same thing with budgets and different budget codes. Yeah. Um, or you could even share across three different people in a in an organization or three different apps. This could be anything, and, right? Yeah. And and you can you can also adjust the share factor the weight factor so that different groups get different weights right so that maybe yeah. the wing is maybe more more work than the the tail and so they get more shares right so you can so show me them. how that show me how that works how did how did where where do where do we tweak all of these kinds of things you can tweak everything in in the scheduling policy here so if mm -hmm. you go to the scheduling policy and hit edit you can see that there's something called share attributes and this is where you specify what uh, weight you want to give each share. So if, 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 for example, I want to give the wing, you know, everything that starts with wing um, a weight factor of, you know, 0.5, what that indicates is now when you submit a job and, and the job share identifier says it's starting with wing, you know, it can be wing part A or wing part B. Um, Every time it's running a job, uh, its its usage is uh, multiplied by this weight factor. So when when we compare its usage with other shares' usages, uh, it's it shows up as less because I put in like a 0.5. So what that uh, what that uh, what that turns out to be is it'll get double the amount of capacity that any other share. Uh, so so has. okay, I get what you mean. Okay, so this is multiplicative and it's multiplicative. What that really means is you're like I, you could almost say that the the weight factor is like how how light your jobs are going to be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the smaller the number, the lighter your jobs are going to be, and the faster they're going to float to the top compared to the other heavier jobs, which you got heavier jobs are going to go to the bottom. Yeah, it's right. all relative. It depends on how yeah, many okay. shares you have in your queue. Uh, it's not an absolute value. Right. Okay. And that's that's actually really cool. Okay, so there's so so we've covered um, we've covered the the share identifier, we've covered the weight factor. What are the other what are the other things we can tweak? Maybe maybe one one thing I think we should also mention in the the share identifier is that you can control which share identifiers user can use. Because if I looked at this first, I said, okay, then I will just create my own share identifier every day. <laughs> <laughs> You're thinking like an evil user. Yeah, I mean, and of course, it's like, good. Engineers are greedy and evil, so they will do that if you don't prevent yep. this from happening. And with IM policies, you can control which user gets which share identifier or yeah. which rules are applied to the share identifier. So yeah. you cannot cheat. Yeah, you At cannot least. cheat. You can say yeah. Christian can only submit jobs with share identifiers that start with Christian. You know. Uh, okay, and, and you uh, control that in IM. In, right? I, you can you control that in IM policies. Yeah. Okay. The, the next one I wanted to talk about is share DK seconds. Um, and by default, this value is zero. Uh, and it's, it's a time duration in seconds of how back far in time uh, uh, you want the batch scheduler to go. And remember uh, that, that a specific share had run a job. Um, right. So it's, it's going to be a helpful in cases where you have one share that has jobs that run for hours and hours. 
and you have other shares which have you know very short running um, jobs that are continuously repeating. If you're looking at just the point of point in time snapshot, uh, you might end up you know treating them equally because. Uh, but then right. the fact that one of the users had longer jobs is not captured. If you had a shared decay value in there of say 300 seconds. That basically means that after five minutes, we're all even again. Yeah, after five minutes, we're all even again. Yeah. Cool. Got it. That makes a lot yeah. of sense. The next thing is computer reservation. Computer reservation is interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it only is, we, we looked at, uh, you know, what, we talked to experts in the field, and uh, one of the problems that uh, in, in, in scheduling with fair share are with multiple users is, uh, you know, based on, uh, based on when jobs arrive. Some users, if, if they all, always have jobs or they, they came in first, they came in, in the morning and they submitted all their jobs um, and their jobs are long running, what can happen is they can occupy all the capacity because nobody mm -hmm. else had jobs at that time. And then somebody else with the higher priority comes in and submits a job. They have to wait, kind of wait till the jobs, the earlier jobs are completed. So in, in a traditional uh, an, environment, uh, you already have in, um, nodes running. So you kind of want to use the nodes. So you, you kind of let it through. Um, but for let the first person who came in with a bunch of jobs run all their jobs. But with the, with the cloud, what you can do is you can control how much uh, capacity is scaled up and down. Um, so computer reservation is a way to say, you know, this is my maximum vCPUs that my compute environment can spin up to. But if there's only one share that showed up, do not go up to the max vCPU. Hold it down to this percentage that I'm specifying here. So if I put in 50 percentage, instead of if there's only one share identifier who's submitting a job, instead of it, instead of uh, the compute environment spinning up all the way to a hun um, you know, if it's 100 vCPU to 100 vCPU, we would now only spin up to 50 vCPU. I want to I want to see if I can get this right. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm going to refer back to the blog uh, that Christian wrote on this thing. Um, in fact, I'll let me just put that up there. This is the for anybody who's watching. This is the URL to go and find the blog on this topic. It's a really good, deeply written blog by Christian explaining uh, how all this stuff works. And there's a few examples in there. And let me let me see if I can get this right. So, if we've got say three different share identifiers. So three different groups designing an aircraft, right? Doing their jobs and competing with each other for capacity. And we said that we were gonna take out a reservation of 75%. So we're gonna guarantee the, what we're essentially doing is we're guaranteeing those three groups that they're equal, gonna get an equal share of the 75% of the available capacity that's gonna be pulled into reserve. And so they real, realistically, that means that each of those three groups are going to have a bite at 25% of the capacity. And the remaining 25% of the capacity is sort of spillover, leftover for anybody who's got more jobs. Yeah, that's, right. that's kind of correct. Yeah. And then they, and so essentially, you've now got these three groups that are equally, you know, they're getting equal billing for their, for their workloads. Uh, and if any of them have got like more workloads than, than the others then they just spill over into that leftover capacity. So nobody ends up with more than 50% um, in that equation. Yeah, the, the, the important part is uh, when, when uh, there, you talked about three share identifiers and, and when only one share identifier has a job, so just the wing department has jobs this morning right. and they come in and submit a job, all they can do is if you specified it as 75%, they can only go up to 75% uh, right. maximum. Uh, okay. So that that twenty five percent is there for for the next department to come in. the The good thing is, uh, right, you're not paying for that reservation because we are not spinning up a capacity, uh, right? So it's right. it, it's it's virtual capacity that's being reserved, not not actual capacity. Right. So that's and that's actually that's very neat. Okay, I get it. And let's talk about jobs with higher priority or lower priority. In FIFO, um, you know, jobs are dispatched based on when when it was submitted. In 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 fair share, we added one more order, uh, one more attribute that determines the order of dispatch, and that's called scheduling priority. Um, so if you know 
uh, as a customer, like you, you know your related to priority of jobs, you can submit, you can use that related to priority and submit it during runtime so that jobs are sorted. Okay, that makes sense. But that's still within a single share identifier. You're yeah, not, you, you you're cannot not affect other people with, uh, you know, you're just affecting your own order of your own jobs. So just as a reminder, this is the, this is the, the blog that Christian wrote um, that goes into quite a lot of detail about how fair share works and what the tunable bits are. Um, it's available at this URL. It's on our HPC blog channel, uh, which you should always consult frequently for really cool news regarding batch and other HPC services. Um, and then Christian, you've also done a workshop. You've built a step-by-step -step workshop on this. Yeah, it's at the bottom of the of the blog. We have a link to this workshop, and this just goes through how to set up batch, how to set up um, create policies, and how to use them, and also contrast this with FIFO scheduling. So it's very extensive, and we will also add more and more over the course of the next couple of days and weeks too. Cool. All right. So uh, well then, with that. Gentlemen, thank you for coming. That was actually really good. Uh, I learned a lot. Uh, and I proofread that blog like a thousand times before it went to air. So I still learned more. So it's actually really good. It's always good to see it happening in person. So for anybody else out there, uh, if there's anything that you'd like to see us cover on a future tech short, uh, find us on Twitter. Our DMs are open. Reach out to us. Uh, but until then, until the next time, uh, thanks for coming, guys. Really appreciate your time. Yeah, thanks, thanks everyone. Thanks, guys. Bye bye. Bye.